Okay, thanks for tuning in then for another boombox video on Wayne's Electrical. Uh, well, what have we got there then? BSLT. Both sides play linear tracking. Well, some boomboxes did have that wrote on the front of it, and some of them didn't. Uh, the ones that didn't, it just said both sides play linear tracking, but... Uh, I do like the one where it says BSL, BSLT on it. And uh, yes, because of that, I do refer to this one as the Sharp VZ2500 BSLT. Okay, just to, uh, you know, bring focus on the fact that it is the one with BSLT on the turntable door. Yes, I did say turntable door on a boombox. Have yourself a look at this. There it is. Okay. Now, like I was saying, some of the uh, Sharp VZ2500s, they don't actually say BSLT on the turntable doors. It, it just said that smaller writing where it said both sides play linear tracking. Okay. So, when I was looking for one of these, I wanted one of the ones with BSLT wrote on the front of it because it just. You know, I reckon it looks better with that on there. And, uh, yeah. They, uh, what I'm going to say is, it doesn't matter whether or not it's got BSLT on it, it's the same boombox, but I like the one with BSL, BSLT on it. Okay, so what we're looking at then in this one is a Sharp VZ2500. Or in my case, a Sharp VZ2500 BSLT. Okay. So... As you can see with this one, we've got speakers. It's obvious it's a portable boombox, but what I'm saying is we've got speakers, and in either side uh, of uh, either, we've got speakers either side of a big old turntable. Okay, yes, there is a turntable in that. Okay, well, not so much of a turn at table. Okay, because with it, look, it's a standard turntable, the record's held on there by gravity. With that one, it doesn't flap down and you, you put the record on there and play it with a needle. Oh no. As you see it there, is as it would play a record. Okay, if you put one in there, uh, you close the door. Okay, that's the door closed as it currently is. And then it would spin around in there on its edge. Okay, it's an upright turntable. Or, or Let's forget the name turntable, okay? It's not a turn a table. Uh, it is... Uh, well, an upright vinyl, or I'll, I'll call them vinyl spinners, okay, or, or record player, or phono, or whatever. One thing it is not is a turntable. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, so there you are. I don't even think it says on, don't, don't even think it refers to it as a turntable, it probably just says phono. It does, on the function selector, it refers to it as phono, okay. Not vinyl turntable. <laughs> it refers to it as a phono. Okay. Well, if you want the full name, it's, it, it's actually called a phonograph. Okay. So we've got that whop, uh, whopping great uh, right in the middle there. Uh, above the left speaker, we got a tape deck. Okay. And above the right hand speaker, we've got a radio. Okay. So you can see the way you've laid it out at the bottom. Speakers at the top, tape deck and radio, and then slap in the middle, big old vinyl spinner. Okay, now here's something. When I say auto reverse, you're thinking cassettes, right? Okay, that is the one of those things that you do on a cassette deck. You put the tape in. When it's finished playing side A, it flips over and play side B for you, right? It's only available on tape decks, okay? No, nothing else. Well, you're wrong, okay? When uh, Sharp made the VZs, one of the things that they've done is they incorporated auto-reverse into a turntable, okay? Yes, that's right. When you put a record in there, when it's finished playing side A, it will flip over and play side B without you having to take the record out, flip it around and put it back in there, Okay? And if that isn't enough for you, there's even a loop function on it. Okay, it'll play side A and then B, A, B, A, B, and it'll just keep looping over all the time. So you don't even need to come back to the unit to start the whole thing over again, if, even if you did want to. 
Okay, so if you put a record in there and you like all of the tracks on both sides, you could put it in there, press the loop function in it, it would just keep going all day long. Okay, until the record wore out, or the, or the needles, or whatever. Okay, so let's get a bit closer up to this then. Okay, it is an auto-reverse turntable. Okay, now, speaking of auto-reverse turntables, I've just got to get this in before we go ahead. Uh, Sharp did actually make that upright auto-reverse turntable as a standalone unit. Okay, so if you can imagine what you see there without the speakers either side of it, okay, you'd have just the turntable door, or vinyl spinner door, okay? Forget the name turntable with this. You'd have just the vinyl spinner there, okay? They'd done that, and they also incorporated that upright vinyl spinner in hi-fi systems as well. If you start up uh, a search engine of your choice and search for Sharp VZ3000, You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, it looks very similar to that. It's not a portable unit. You can't put batteries in it. And it's a, uh, well, I wouldn't say three-piece unit. It's a it's a hi-fi uh, system with separate speakers. Okay, you cannot attach the speakers to main unit. Okay, it's a, a home hi-fi system. It's not a portable. But that one is, okay. Sharp made two portable upright vinyl spinners. One of them is a Sharp VZ2000, and the other one was that one, the Sharp VZ2500. Now, there are others, okay, uh, but they're like Japanese variants. And the Japanese variant of that is the VZV20, okay. Again, they've done two versions of the Japanese variant. Uh, the other one... That silver bit across the top of the turntable door, it is actually uh, got transparent plastic on it. And then behind that, there's like a, a two-tone blue grid in there. Okay. And, uh, yeah. But the rest of the world gets that version. And even then, there's two versions of that. Like I've already said, one without, one with, and one without the uh, large BSLT letters on the door. I like the one with the large BSLT, BSLT letters on there. Let's go to that tape deck then and have a look at all the buttons and controls that are up there. What have we got then? Well, there's a couple of other buttons associated uh, up there, not with the tape deck. Right, this is one of these tape decks where, basically speaking, the eject button and the stop button are separate. So, from the left over to the right, then we've got eject, record, play, stop, rewind, fast forward and pause. Okay, and you'll notice that there is a line joining the play button and rewind and fast forward button. And it says APSS on there. We should go into that a bit later. Moving along then, we've got some other buttons there, or controls. Right next to that tape deck, we've got another one, and it says tape. And you've got on this a three-way tape selector. Okay, over to the left, we've got normal. In the middle, we've got chrome. And then over to the right, we've got metal. Or if you want to call it metal, whatever. Just above that then, we've got Dolby noise reduction. On or off? Okay, you choose. And above that, yes, we've got the big old power switch, which turns on the whole unit. Just above that, we've got not only the make and model number, but a little tape uh, counter in there. Okay, as you can see, it says both sides play disc stereo system, VZ2500. Or in my case, VZ2500 BSLT. We've got some lights on the turntable door. I said it again, and I it's not a turntable, it's a vinyl spinner. Okay, go again. We've got some lights on the door of the vinyl spinner. Okay, side A, and if it's side A is playing, that little green light's on. If side B is playing, the red light's on. The next one along is the loop function I was saying to you about, where you can play a record all day long and it just continuously loop over. That's like a little sort of yellowy light. And if you selected that function, that little light would be on. And then the other one along, it'll play side A, play side B, and then stop. Okay, if you've chosen that function, then, uh, you know, you have done. Okay, I do believe you with this turntable, you... Uh, flip and set it again. Vinyl spinner. I do believe with this vinyl spinner that uh, 
you can just play one side. You don't have to choose it to loop if you don't want. But it's there as an auto reverse turn, uh, 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 auto reverse vinyl spinner. Okay, don't say turntable anymore. Up here then is the controls associated with the vinyl spinner. Yeah, okay. So we got door open. Okay, that's pretty obvious. You should push that button right in, and the door opens. That's a big old mechanical button. That one. Okay, but the other ones are like soft, uh, soft press electronic ones. Got thirty-three and forty-five. That pretty much explains itself. Okay, so you can run two different speeds on this. Unfortunately, if you've got a pile of sixteens or seventy-eights, then I can't help you out there. Neither can that boombox. An option to select side A or B because when your piece of vinyl is inside the vinyl spinner, uh, you can't get to it unless you open the door. Okay. And so you've got a button there so you can choose what side you're going to play. So that side A, side B, you don't even need to take it out and flip it around because it's an auto reverse turntable and as such it's got two needles in it. One to play either side. Okay, it doesn't actually physically flip the disc around. Okay, it basically plays one side with one needle. When it's done that, it takes that needle off the record, slows the record down, starts spinning it around the other way, and then drops the side B needle onto the other side, and then side B commences with the play. There's your uh, loop button. Okay, then you've got both sides button. That is basically side A, side B, and it stops. Uh, you got a fast forward button. Notice, note the position of the arrows. Okay, normally speaking, when the arrows are pointing that way, you would associate that with rewind. But what my point being here is, with the arrows going that way, it's pointing towards the centre of the record. Okay, now when you play a record, as you know, or if you don't, let me tell you that play on a record starts from the outer edge going into the middle. Okay, so therefore. Those arrows are pointing towards the middle of the record. So when you press that, it actually takes a needle off the, off the record, moves the tone arm along, and when you let go of that, it drops it back on the record. Okay. And with rewind, it's rather much around the other way. We'd associate those arrows with fast forward, but, look, you know, as like I've already said, play starts with the outer edge going into the middle. So therefore, if you move the needle back the other way, you're actually essentially rewinding the record that next button along then Q what that is about is on a standard turntable you can get hold of the tone arm and lift it up and down but on this one everything's enclosed in there you can't get to it okay so they've provided a button there and when you press that it drops the needle on the record and when you press it again it'll take it off okay now whether it's on Needle, needles on the record or off the record it keeps on spinning okay so that's a bit like a pause button okay now that other button along where it says play and cut that's your, basically your play and stop okay when you press play the record starts but the uh, record starts turning and the needles dropped on the record when you press it again it cuts it basically stops takes the needle off returns it to the beginning and stops the record from turning Okay, now that last bit is important, okay, because when you're playing the record, if you press the cut button, it'll take the needle off and return it to the beginning. Okay, if you don't want it to do that, you use the Q button. Okay, so you you know, if you're listening to a record and the phone started ringing, you press the Q button and it would actually lift the needle off the record but keep it in that place. And keep the record turning. So when you finish the phone call, you then press the Q button again, and it'll just pick up where it left off. Okay, so that's the controls then for the vinyl spinner. Okay, what's this other one along here then? Ah, oh, that's a tuner. Okay, just down a bit then. That's the tuning for that radio just there. Okay, as like a lot of my other boom boxes, you tune this one in with a piece of string. Okay, there'll be a pulley on that. And you see that little indicator there. I will do it. There you go. See that little that little pointer there going along. There you 
go. So when you turn that, you're basically operating a piece of string that pulls that backwards and forwards. Then that other end of that piece of string disappears down the back, interacts with something electronical, and uh, pulls the tuning into the station that you want. All them buttons underneath that radio, then, what are they? Well, you've got your various different functions and bands. Okay, we need a bit more zoom on that, I reckon. There we go. So, from left to right, then. Okay, you've got your functions. Tape, phono, and auxiliary. Okay. Then, when you're... Well, you haven't got a radio, uh, radio button. What you've actually got is you've got your tape, phono, and auxiliary, and then all of the other buttons are the radio. Okay. It depends on which one you press which then determines you know what band you tune in okay so if i'm say listening to tape and then i want to go over the radio the tape button we will be pressed in okay when you press it in it stays in and then when you press one of the others as you push that one in the previously selected one pops out i'll give you a demonstration there you go so you're listening to your tape i'm going to press fm stereo why watch what happens with the tape button there you go, it pops out. So that one's in then. And then that one's out. And if I go back to tape, the FM stereo button pops out. Like that. Now what you can do is you noticed right at the beginning all of the buttons were level. Okay, if you sort of partly push one of the buttons in, you can get the previously selected button to pop out. And then when you let go of the button, that one comes out as well. None of them are selected. So I'm going to press phono very carefully. There you go, and now all the buttons are level, no function is selected. Okay, and it also just makes it look nice that uh, all of the buttons are the same level. So there you go. Oh dear. Looks like one of the controls are missing. And that's not just come off, that is actually snapped off. Okay, when I received this boombox, it was on there. Okay, I didn't break it, but I was using it one afternoon. And it just come off in the end. So I thought, well, I looked at it, the part that broke off, and you could see before now someone's actually been in there and glued it back in. Okay. They'd actually had the little uh, slider tip off. Let me show you. With, uh, the, with the volume one. There you go. See that little white bit? Okay, that obviously goes inside, and it sticks through the front casing. And you've got this. Okay, that's the actual part that you operate. Okay. And what had happened was, is, uh, in there, it broke off. And what I had hold of was this and a little bit which goes through there. And, uh, yeah, someone's obviously had the case off, glued the part back in there, put the case back on, the little bit sticks out, and then put that back on there. Of course, I was moving it one afternoon, snap, the flipping didn't come off with the parts sticking out the back. Like that. Let me put that back on. And that little bit that sticks out there, it's ever so thin. Okay, so, you know, you can see that sticks out further than the front case. So if I thump that downwards, I can quite easily snap that off. Okay, so we haven't got a balance control, but what you can do is shove a toothpick in there. And the little part that's left in there, you can move it along. So I've set it in the middle. Okay, at least it is the balance one and not the volume control. Could be worse than what it currently is. And there we are. But because part of it snapped off, what I would need to do is... Uh, well, the only way I could repair that now would be to source another uh, Sharp VZ2500... Open it up, and inside it, you've just got one big circuit board with all them push buttons on it and all of the little uh, slider things. And on the side of that circuit board, there's like a multi pin plug, you just unplug it. And then I'd have to put that circuit board in that boombox to repair it. It's the only way I could do it. Okay, so we've got the balance then, which is missing. Uh, it's still working. You shove a toothpick in there, and move it along, like I said. And you've got your volume control. Below that we've got microphone volume, okay, you can actually plug a microphone into this and have a little sing-along. 
Where is the uh, microphone socket on this one? It's probably, I think it's around the side. But on some boom boxes, it's on, it's at the front. Okay, we'll have a look at all the jacks later, don't worry. So we've got microphone mixing then. And what that allows you to do is basically, like I've already said, plug in a microphone and have a little sing-along. Next one along, we've got bass, and that pretty much explains itself. You've got a centre section on that, which is basically, uh, it's flat, as I call it. When you slide it over to the right, it adds bass in, and when you slide it over to the left, it trims some off. Okay, but if you put it in the middle, it doesn't add anything, it doesn't take away anything, and that's the same with a treble. Okay. So there it is, I've explained all the uh, buttons and functions on it then. But we're not yet done with that vinyl spinner in the middle. Okay, when we come back after the break, I'm going to show you around inside that vinyl spinner. And uh, yeah, there's a couple of other little functions in, th in there, okay, which you can set. And also, also show you just around in there in general, how it actually uh, accommodates the records, how it grips hold of it to spin it and all of that stuff. Okay, uh, yeah, so we're just going to uh, nip off or break, you can go have a cup of tea time and things. When we come back, we'll be having a look at that vinyl spinner, uh, turn it around and have a look at the back, and we'll also hunt down all the input and output jacks on it and have a look at those as well, and the specifications. Okay, little break then, come back soon. Okay then, we're back after the break, and we're going to be carrying on with uh, the Sharp VZ2500 BSLT. Okay, we're going to be delving into that uh, vinyl spinner now. Okay, I've got it, we've got the wording right now. It says something right in the middle there. I'm not sure if I showed you that. you got linear tracking. What that basically means is the needle in that, unlike a turntable, the needle in that travels in a straight line. Okay. It goes, you see the scale on there? It goes right the way across. And you, you, that little silver thing in there, if I can get on it. That's your tone arm in there. There it is. So there you go. And you can see up there it says 30 and 17. Okay. Your 30 is your 12 inch. And your 17 is a 7 inch, I believe. Okay, and it says A and B side. What does it say along the other side? Uh, yes, here we go. Both sides play disc. Computer controlled linear tracking. Okay, speaking of computer controlled, there's a funny little wiring diagram on the top of that. There you go, a little circuit diagram of all what's going on inside. Again, we can have a look at that a little bit later on, but for now, we're going to dive into that vinyl spinner okay now there's a big old mechanical button on the front of that when you push it in that door opens but uh, it, it doesn't just go whop and open it's like well not motorized but it's some kind of like soft eject in it but it makes a funny noise let me get a bit closer to it now hopefully we get this on the audio listen to this I'll just tilt the camera down so you can hear it okay because on this camera the microphones are situated on top Okay, they don't face forward, they're actually on top. So listen to this. There you go. So that's like a soft eject mechanism. And when you close it, it just closes. Like that. What I will do is I'll, I can turn your audio up a bit. Here we go. Listen to this again then. Ready? Oh.
here it is then. Hopefully we got it on, aud on the audio. Uh, if not, I can just get it in the uh, video editor and tweak it up that way. So, let's open it up then. There we go. So, vinyl spinner is open. Inside, we got a tray which we put the uh, bit of vinyl on. Okay, this small one, that's where you put your 7 inch single. Okay, there's like a little lip just there. And uh, that stop, what that little lip does, okay, that, it stops the, when you put the 7 inch single on, it stops it coming off the edge of there and dropping down onto the lower tray. Okay, when you close this up, this tray sort of, uh, it goes in, if I can do it. See, it goes in, like that, right? There you go, it goes in. And that little thing down there, it sort of uh, retracts in. Okay. So there you are. And of course your uh, trove inch single sits on this one, down here. Okay, so it's a 7 inch and it's a 12 inch. Now, with this uh, one, like I said earlier, with a, t a standard turntable, it's held in there by gravity. And uh, there you are. With this one, because it's uh, upright, you need to grip the record in order to turn it. Well, we've got this large, large thing here. That's actually connected to the motor. Okay. And then you've got another one here. This is not powered. Okay. This one, uh, if you can imagine between there and there, there's obviously a record. And the record gets sandwiched in between those two, and this is sprung loaded. Okay, as you can see, it moves. Okay, so it's sprung loaded, and uh, yeah, when you've got a record in there, that closes up and it, it squashes the record in between them, and uh, of course, it grips it. And of course, that's rubber on there, and that's rubber, that part. And uh, because it squashes the record in it, it can grip it and therefore rotate the record. Okay, now although you put the record on this tray, when it closes up, that tray goes back and moves out of the way, so it allows the record to free spin. And what another thing you can do with this, you can even put in the little 7-inch jukebox records, okay? Now if you know the of the ones, brilliant, but if you don't... Uh, it's a record with a hole in the middle of it, about that big, sort of thing. But you've got an adapter there, okay, this thing, okay, and obviously speaking with the record to slot over that. But if you've got a record with just a standard little hole in the middle, that there, it goes in. Okay, see so it goes in, it can pop it in and out. Okay, so when you put a standard record in with a little hole in the middle, it closes up, it obviously presses against that and goes back in. Okay. But if you've got a 7 inch single in there with a large hole, it obviously goes over that. And once again the record will be pressed up against this and sandwiched in between the two so it can grip it to rotate it. Okay. So there you go. There is side B needle there. Okay. And side A needle is all the way over there. Okay. So when side A is playing, uh, the record is rotating that way okay and that needle comes across to the middle okay and then when side B is playing it goes that way and that needle there goes along the back there okay it'll obviously pop out to make contact with the record and the same with that one down there okay and being also reverse turntable if it's playing side A it'll be turning when it reaches the side, end of side A, it will stop, slow down, and then start rotating the other way. And that needle goes back, and that needle pops out and then starts playing. But uh, I am under this impression that the whole thing is driven by a pulley system. And you basically have, although you've got two needles, you've only got one motor. Okay. And, uh, yeah, you know, in here somewhere, there'll be like a, well, not a piece of string, it'll be some kind of, pulley system, maybe a system of belts or something, and when the motor turns, uh, 
both of the needles move at the same time. Okay, so you've got this one at the outer edge and that one at the outer edge. It starts up and then, then while it's playing, only one of the needles will be engaged with the record. Okay, the one they're not playing will be like retracted back. But as it's playing, both of the needles go towards the centre. And then when it finishes playing, both of them go back to the outer edge again. Okay. Because I've got a feeling that uh, there's it's a system of belts and pulleys inside there. Okay. Uh, hold on a moment, we've got a feline. What do you want, Tobias? Come on, in you come. I'm doing a boombox video, as you know. Come on in, come and wreck the video. There we are, there's a Tobias. It's a turn to you, yeah, oh, Techno Cat. We had a bit of Techno Cat there. Okay, so, yes, that was the, uh, all that mechanism in there. Uh, another thing this can do is to uh, it can automatically detect the size of the record, okay? Because like I say, you can put a 12 inch in there and a 7 inch. But here's the thing: when you close this up, it being an automatic vinyl spinner, how does it know to either start the needle at that point or a little bit in where the edge of a 7 inch single would be? Well, just above there. We have light detection uh, electronics in there. Okay, there they are. Okay, here comes Techno Cat trying to ruin the video again. So we've got uh, light detection electronics in there. And when you put in a 7 inch single, that one gets covered up. And therefore, the electronics in there can determine that because that one's obstructed and that one's not, it's a 7 inch single. But when you put a 12 inch in there, it covers both of them up, therefore it knows that it's a 12 inch record in there. And that's how it does it. That's the automatic function. If you want manual, you've actually got a little dial there, and you can rotate that. And there's like little devices in there, which there's light beams that come out and it interacts with those. And when you turn that, it, it can obstruct one of the little light beam devices therefore bypassing the man uh, the automatic option and uh, yes it uh, bypass the automatic option and make it into manual okay at the moment I believe that's on auto if I go around the back of the boom box we'll have a look at it oh yeah look at this almost snapped on flipping antenna off and put that away when you put uh, put away your antennas, you don't get hold of that and push it down. You get hold of it around about there and you pull it in like that. Because otherwise, what happens is, I've seen other people, they get hold of, put their hand there and slide that down. The antenna bows out and then snaps off. Okay, so don't do that. Always get hold of it there and push it down and then push it down some more and push it down some more. It's okay pulling it out to do that, but don't put your hand on there when it's fully extended and hope to push it all in because otherwise you risk snapping your antenna off. Just there then. Take no cat. Just there. There you go. You can see like the little light beam things in there. Okay, it is on auto. Okay, and you've got EP up there and LP down there. And as you can see by the elongated hole, when you rotate that, that one can stay being a bit of light out, but that one would be obstructed. Let's see if I can operate it. They are quite stiff to operate, actually. Oh, my goodness me. Yeah, I can't operate that, but, uh, yeah, they, you can do it. There you go, we've just done it. Okay, so, that bottom one's obstructed now, but that one can still let light through. Okay, so that's the upper one and that's the lower one. And because of that, this uh, turntable, the uh, vinyl spinner, will now automatically assume that any record you put in there is a 12 inch. Okay, and that could have a bit of a problem, okay, because if, you, if you've chosen it to be a 12 inch, and you put a 7 inch in there, 
uh, it'll actually start spinning the turntable, uh, start spinning the rec record up, and it will uh, drop the needle where there isn't uh, there's no, where there's no record, and that basically could mean that it damages the uh, damages the needle. Okay, so you'd have to be careful if you select it on that to only put 12 inch uh, records in. What are you doing, Will? He's being all silly. I think he's just trying to get attention. Look, here he goes. What are you doing? You ruined my bed sheet. There's only an old one, so it doesn't matter. But yes, sorry about that, mine is. That's what he's like, he flipping distracts. Look, 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 here he goes. What are you doing? You're just trying to ruin the video, aren't you, you techno cat? Ain't ya? Oi, look up. Yeah. Trying to ruin the video, ain't ya? Here he goes, he's going all silly, look. You got beans, haven't ya? Toby's got beans. See what I mean? This is what I've got to put up with. I'm trying to do a video. And he comes in here and starts being all silly. And beanie. There's nothing there. He's just being all silly. Ain't ya? You reckon not video, Will? So... Let's try and get back to this thing, oh, without knocking the plug out of the wall socket because it's charging the camera up. Uh, yes, yeah, so with that, you've got to make sure you've only put 12 inch records in there, not your 7 inch, otherwise it will drop the needle where there isn't a record and it could damage it. Okay. And if you turn it the other way, uh, it blocks both of them. Okay, and again, if it blocks both of them, once again, it will assume that uh, it's a 12-inch single again. Okay. So there you go, but I'm going to leave it on auto. Where is auto? About there. Okay, so both of them can shine their lights out, and then, therefore, it's down to the record, uh, down to the vinyl spinner. To determine what size is in there. There's that wiring diagram on the top. Let's have a look at that then. I don't know how far we are into this. I normally allocate 30 minutes per, per boombox video. But a boombox this size cannot fit in within uh, 30 minutes. Let's have a look at the wiring diagram on it then. Oh, and uh, feet totally wrecked the video as well. So we've got some time for that to add in as well. Yeah, there's a little wiring diagram on there then. I'll just scan the camera across the top. I'm not going to say anything. and see if you can figure this little lot out. Okay then, that's basically what's going on inside that unit, if you can figure all it out. I don't do electronics, but that's what's in there. And there we go. Now, a little bit later on in this video, we're going to uh, have a look at the jacks. Okay, the, the jacks and inputs and outputs and all of that stuff. Let me just close that turntable door up. Like that. And there we are. Now, what are we doing for time? Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another section here. Uh, I've lost track of when the last break was. 
If it's more than 10 minutes, we'll have another break right about now. Uh, if it isn't, we'll just carry on. Okay. Uh, so, yes. Just hold on there a moment. Okay then, let us continue. What we got there then is a specification plate for the Sharp VZ2500. Uh, this one does actually sound like VZ2500H though. Uh, we've got multi-voltage selector on this one. Okay, we've got 110, 220 or 240 volts, 50 or 60 hertz, it doesn't matter, and then 60 watts. Uh, you do have an option of a 15 volt jack input or 10 D cells. Yes, you can run this unit on batteries. Okay, there's the frequency range of the various different bands on the radio. Serial number and then Sharp Corporation made in Japan. If you wish to continue looking at that, press the pause button now because we're moving on. There it is then. Now, I've got some jacks on the back of this to, for us to have a look at. Before we do though, you obviously want to have a look at that because you're only going to pester me on the comments box for not including it. There we go. It's a sharp 16 centimeter woofer, two-way speaker system. So there you go. It obviously says on the other one as well. It's a shame it didn't paint that white. And then it would have made it stand out a bit more. But no, I didn't want to. Creaky tripod going up. There we go. We've got a selection of jacks to look at now. And what we got then. Well, the one over to the left is FM external antenna. The one in the middle is external AM antenna and the one over to the right is an input where well, it's a combined input and output actually that round one with the five pinholes in it okay so you can use that as an input and output the hole right at the bottom there that is a combined uh, shared negative and then these two holes here will either be input or output, and then these two here it would be either the input or output. I don't know which way round it is. Okay, but it is a combined input and output. Okay. Moving along this way a bit, there's a little switch just there, and as you can see, it, it says on that uh, FM uh, band selector. It says something else there. Uh, CSW. Not quite sure what that is. I don't know why it says SW there, but it says F FM and selector. Maybe you can. It's yes, yeah, a little sticky label put on there as well, so that's obviously for shortwave as well. Okay, maybe there's a version of this boombox which uh, doesn't have the shortwave band on it. So when there is one that does have it on there, they put a little sticky label on. To show shortwave as well. Okay, so shortwave and FM band selector then. Okay, I've just locked that into uh, manual focus because that's drifting a bit. So, without switch then, put it over that way. It's for the rod, which is that. Okay, remember that. And if you turn the switch over the other way, it's the external uh, you know, for the jacks. Wheels wrecking the video again. What do you want, Will? So, that's the uh, jacks on the back. Here comes old Techno Cat. What do you want? You want to make a video? What do you want? Just hold on there a moment, people. Toby's trying to make a video. Carrying on then, 
we've done we've discussed all those jacks on the back of there then uh do excuse my nose something set it off just down there we've got the voltage selector and uh, you basically stuff a screwdriver in there rotate it it is rather sort of L manual okay down there rated line voltage I don't know if I'll be able to get in there with the zoom. I doubt it. It's starting to go a bit. No, it's not going to have it. Unless I'll take the camera off a tripod. It should be set up for 240. Because that's what we've got in the UK. Let's get that right in there. Oh, that's why I'm on manual. Uh, what? There you go. Look at that. So rated line voltage and it is set up for 240 volts because we're in the UK. We won't want anything less in there because it risk popping it. Okay, like I say, it is rather manual. And if I took this boom box in a country where they use 110 volts and I select it at 110, then come back in the UK and forgot to change it back to 240, uh, the minute you plug it in, uh, there's pop. Okay, something goes off a bit of a pop and it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a shame when it happens. So whenever you plug this in, uh, just look in there, make sure it's on the correct voltage for the region that you're using it in. And if it is, then plug in. If it isn't, change it, otherwise you're going to get a bit of a pop. There's the mains input then, okay. Inside there, I oh, can't really see it. Oh yes you can, it's right down the bottom there. Okay, see that little bit sticking up? Just there, just hiding behind that, there's a little push button switch. When you put a plug in, it presses that down, okay, and then because of that, it changes the boombox over to AC power. And then when you pull that plug out, that switch pops up in there, and therefore it converts the boombox over to batteries. Now sometimes what happens is, with that switch stays stuck down, okay, especially if the plug's been in there for some time, it, uh, the button stays stuck down. And of course, what happens is you take the plug out and then put batteries in and find that the boombox is not working. Here's a little top tip from the Worldwide Ghetto Massive. Get a little screwdriver, put it in there at that, at that angle, and then just press it a couple of times. You might find you get it to pop up, and then your boombox will run on batteries. Okay, so sometimes that does get stuck, and that's the way to get around it. Just uh, poke it a bit with a little screwdriver, it pops up, and then you're ready to go on batteries. Over there then we've got, uh, it's a DC 15 volt input jack with a negative centre, that little wee one just there. Okay, now we're not done yet, we've still got some more jacks to play around with because if you want to, you know, listen privately you're going to need a headphone jack. And if you want to have a little sing along, because we did have that microphone mixing thing on the front if you remember. Then uh, we're going to need those jacks, but before we do, we've got another little switch on the back, which I almost forgot, and it's right there. Okay, that is for something called, what is it called on this one? Beat Cancel. Now, other manufacturers call this Beat Cancel, Beat Cut, Beat Proof, Riff, or whatever. On this top, we've only got two options, A or B. Now what that's used for is when you're tuning into a radio station. I can't remember if it's on FM or medium wave. But it was a type of radio frequency interference that I've heard other people referring to as a beating sound. And apparently that switch, you're supposed to operate that and it either reduces it or cancels it out altogether. Which is what's called beat cancel. Whether it does or not is another thing. Okay, so you've got your options there, A or B. And it's supposed to either reduce it or cancel it out altogether. That's what that does. Let me zoom out a bit. Now, it's around that side there. You see that little bit sticking out? In there, we've got a selection of jacks then. Let me turn this around. This is quite a weighty box. There they are, just there. Now, those are 6one millimeter size. So, there we are. The one up the top then. As you can see, it says microphone, so you can put your microphone in there and have a little sing along to the music. The one down at the bottom there, it's your headphone socket, 6.1 millimeter again. Okay, so you can get a proper set of hi fi headphones in there and listen away. And if you want to use the little wee headphones that come from with your pod thing, then you're going to have to put an uh, adapter in there to reduce it down to the 3.5 millimeter size. 
So there it is. Let me just set the camera down. We'll spin this around because we're all done now. And then we're going to get the tape measure out and measure this one up. Oh, might as well keep it like that and do the depth first. Okay. While well, I've got it in that position, might as well. It'd be silly not to. Now, I'm normally allocating 30 minutes per boombox. But like I've said, a boombox this size, you just can't get it in within 30 minutes. It's like trying to get 2 litres of water and put it in a 1 litre bottle. It's just not going to fit. And then, you know, basically I've got a bit of a false time going on because Toby's wrecked the video a couple of times. I might have to either leave that in, edit it out, or do some other thing with that bit of footage. Tape measure them. Uh, because we've got a power uh, power jack in the, on the back, and we've also got that 5-pin DIN plug. I mean, them 5-pin DIN plugs with a strain relief on the back, and then all the wire coming out. Uh, I'm going to leave about that much space at the back. Okay, for the plugs and the jack plugs and all that bit coming out the back. And also, when, you know, anything like this, you don't put it right up against the wall, because there's uh, ventilation slots on the back to let it cool off in there. Okay, so, you know, you should always leave a bit of space, but because you've got to take into account all the jack plugs hanging out the back, and the fact that the uh, DIN plugs are quite bulky, and then you've got a strain relief on the back of that, then you've got all the wire that hangs out, you've got to take into account the, the amount of bends that the wires need and all that lot. I'm going to be putting an add in a gap on about that, okay. Overall depth, then, the front of that box is quite flat, so there's no nothing protruding out, which you can see it just it's nice and flat right the way down there. That plug over there is for the camera, this wire. Okay, so there we are. If you've wondered what it was, we're not going to power the boom box up. Overall depth then adding a bit on. Call it nine and a half inches where my thumb is. Okay, right there, that's my, where's my thumb is, that's nine and a half inches, or if you want that in the other one, that would be, call it 240 millimetres. Okay, now we can do the height from this angle as well, there's no uh, controls and functions on top, so we can do two heights, one with the handle up and one with the handle down, where is the handle? There it is, you can't really see it from that angle, but there's the handle sticking up. Okay, there it is. So I'm going to do two heights then, one with a handle up and one with a handle down. Obviously speaking, the one with a handle down is around about there. So let's get into it then. Handle down height, call it 16 inch or 410 millimetres. We have the handle up. Oh. Uh, call it 18 inch or... That would be 460 millimetres. Okay. All we got to do now is the width of the boom box. So I'm going to spin that around. And uh, yeah, let's do it then. Oh, and also because we got these on the side here, I'm going to add a bit on so that you can get around the side to put the plugs in. I don't think there's anything around the other side. Nope, nothing around the other side. Oh, that's a weighty flipping boomer, that one. Well, not so much the boomer. Oh, and also, I might like to point out as well, with these boom boxes, if uh, you're playing the record and you turn the volume up a bit too much, sometimes what can happen is you get a bit of feedback. Okay, the, the vibration from the speakers, it makes the uh, needle vibrate. That then goes to the amplifier, which then goes to the speakers, which then feeds back to the needle. That then goes to the amplifier, then to the speakers, and it just gets worse and worse, and you get all sorts of rumbling and goodness knows what coming out of it. And uh, if you don't quickly go over there and turn the volume down, uh, it'll either wreck the, your vinyl or uh, damage the boombox. Okay, say for example, it uh, blows one of the speakers out. Okay, because it will just get gradually worse and worse and worse until it basically blows itself. Okay. Right, overall whip then. I'm going to add a bit on the end for those jack plugs, okay? I'm 
Okay, call it 32 inch then. Or that would be 820 millimeters. Okay, so we've done all the controls and fun functions and things on the fronts. I've explained all those lights, buttons, the vinyl spinner, uh, that little uh, selector thing inside there. And the fact that it does have uh, two needles so it can play both sides. And there we are. So what we've been looking at then, in this one, is a Sharp VZ2500. Or in my case, a Sharp VZ2500 BSLT. Hope you liked that one. Uh, yeah, if you did, nice big thumb up. Okay, before we go though, what I will say is... Uh, I do have another one of these uh, vinyl spinners. And it's a Sharp VZ2000. When you look at that and compare it to this, I think this is basically the cheapened version. Okay, because, uh, well, it's a big rectangular box. And uh, I wouldn't say it lacks detailing. But when you compare it to the Sharp BZ2000, you know, even that bit in the middle there, in the, in the that's just like a, well, I wouldn't say it's a sticky label in there. But uh, it's just like a flat seal with a black writing on it. On the VZ2000, it's actually like a little bit that they've added in there. And it's nice and chromey and all that lot. And all the letters are recessed in it and all that business. And, you know, really went to town on the VZ2000. And then they did that. Okay, so I'm off. Okay, if you want to subscribe, then do so. Okay, I'd like to have you on board and it'd be brilliant for you to uh, jump in. Because then, if you're a subscriber, new videos that come up, you'll get a notification. Okay, and you won't have to miss out. Okay, it doesn't matter whether it's boom boxes, Toby Feline, plugs, electrical, electric meters, rate changers, whatever. Whenever I load a new video up, you'll get a notification coming. It's all right here on Wayne's Electrical. Okay, so there we go. We've got to go. Uh, this is the. Uh, you know, been another boombox video in full high definition, which is 1920 by 1080p size and stereo sound on the camera. A bit later on, then uh, another boombox on another month. Okay, so there we are. I'm going to uh, basically get off now, and I think we'll end this one right where we started, which is right there. Cheers for watching this one then.